going to show you how you can actually create a listener in Process Builder. I started to type listener process builder that will send an alert notification to your customers every time one of your agents actually closes a case. So every time they've gone ahead and actually uh, service one of the requests that your customer has, uh, has put in for. So you could just come into the process builder. You want to open a new process. We can name the process name. It has to be um, unique. So we'll say next mode case update. Um, we could just say next mail case close, uh, send a message to customer confirming their ticket, their issue has been resolved. How's that? Okay, and this process start when a record changes, that's the trigger for kicking off the process. And so here's a process builder. This may or may not be foreign to you. If it's foreign to you, it's a super, super easy tool to use. You don't need to have any development experience. But the nice thing is that once you install that package, now the Nextmo Apex class is available even within this tool. So um, we can go ahead and specify an object that we're going to listen for changes on. So a resource we're listening for changes on. Let's go ahead and select a case. And we already have a process that's monitoring cases. Let's see uh, that it still allows us to monitor. And so when we start the process, it'll be when a record is created or edited uh, rather than when it's just created. And then the advances allow process to evaluate record multiple times in a single transaction. I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. Let's see how we do here. So the criteria name will be something like maybe case closed, right? Because we would just want to send a notification to our end customer when an agent has gone in and closed the case. Uh, criteria for executing action. So this is where we would drop in the business logic. So again, you don't need any coding experience. This is actually building the logic, which is going to determine whether or not your, your functions and your flow will be executed. So we're going to set some conditions. I'll find a field. Um, let's see what fields are available. I'm going to scroll this list here. And let's just say closed. Okay, so it's a type Boolean, which means true or false. API name is closed. Choose that. Um, so if the, so the way this would read is if the case is closed, then we would do something, right? So uh, let's say all when all conditions are met, the only condition is that the case is closed. Now let's see what this advanced is. Do you want to execute the actions only when the specified changes are made to the record? Only when the specified changes are made to the record. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, because um, I don't want updates every time the case is edited, if there's any sort of internal messages or if the status goes from open to working or open to escalated. I only want it when the case is closed. So I'll click Save. And so there we have a record that we're monitoring. We have this uh, condition, this logic that we've built in. So if it's true, if a case is actually closed, let's add an action. So we can select an, app, uh, an action type. In this case, it'll be Apex. The action name will be, let's see, send message, send update message, an Apex class. So this will actually come up, send next mail message will come up um, because you've installed that package, it should be available to you directly. So uh, what comes up after that are these Apex variables. So these are the variables you're going to be passing into your request as part of that payload. So we can specify the channel, which in this case will again say is WhatsApp. It could just as simply be SMS, but there isn't as pretty of a, uh, an interface to kind of show off here. Um, the from number, what would be the from number? Let's use an, uh, a Nexmo enable WhatsApp number. The text would be, hi, thank you for um, your inquiry. Your issue has been resolved. We um, sent you a refund of the amount XYZ. Okay, and this could be a dynamic value, but for now, let's just keep it static. Um, the two number is going to be my phone number, and these are all strings, and so we'll save that. 
perfect. And then all we have to do is activate that process. Okay, so now this has been activated. We go back to view all processes or not. Let me go to uh, my app launcher and then I can actually open up the service console. So now I'm going to assume the, uh, the role of an agent. So I'm an agent sitting in your contact center. I'm reviewing the open cases that are uh, kind of building up in your queue. Here's a case with a case number. I can say something like, uh, hi, I saw your ad interested. Great, we are going to reach out directly. Thanks for your support. All right, so maybe we share that. And the key point here is to update the status because if you remember, uh, we have the trigger set listening for when the case is closed. So let's go ahead and close this and see if our process builder picks up on it. Okay, so uh, what we just received is a message from uh, our process builder. It says, hi, thank you for your inquiry. Your issue has been resolved. We sent you a refund amount of XYZ. So that trigger was fired um, when this event was kind of ingested by that process builder flow. And so there are a lot of tools that you can do this with. In this case, we're using the process builder. You could just as easily use something like a meal flow, or you can build it internally you know, within your own client application or a server-side application.